Where's my lens cap? It's definitely in this pocket somewhere. I know it's in here. It's not in. Oh, it's in there! I've got it! <laughs> oh. The trials and tribulations of a landscape photographer. Dear me. A huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you want to build your own website with ease, go to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner. So pretty much since I got across the Scottish border it's been raining and it's still raining today and that's not a complaint because I said in last week's video that you know I'd rather it be like this than sunny all day for the photography it's much better but it does make the car camping situation a lot more difficult in particular the cooking I can't really like sit in the car and cook it wouldn't be very safe but I've had enough, I've had enough. On my car, I've got this, you can see this here, this little platform down here. Uh, it's really windy, but I've backed up here in this park, uh, park arc. I am always, always ruining the English language. Car park, um, in a way that I'm kind of sheltered from the incoming um, high winds from the sea. So this, to be honest, this is quite nice. There's no one around. It's time for some bacon. So, in windy Scotland, we have got a bacon bun, quite well filled because I want to use up the bacon, and an AeroPress coffee. No knockoff here. And I was just thinking about this when I was wild swimming in last week's video, I said that I was living the dream. This could be the new contender for the, the living the dream moment. I'm going to gobble this down, drink this down, <laughs> and then we're getting some photography. Oh dear, just looking at myself in there on the screen on the camera, you can tell. Look at that head. You can tell that I've spent the night in a car. No. Um, so first shot of the day. Nose is running already. Proper excited about this one. Um, so I've just I've honestly like 20 seconds from the car. That is the beauty of doing what I'm doing here. Yes, it's a bit of a sacrifice sleeping in a metal box, but this is what you get, you know. This would be like a six-hour drive for me or something. 20 second walk there's your dinner so this is going to be the first shot of the day I've got my 14 to 30 millimeter lens on so I'm shooting quite wide and um, having said that I have zoomed in slightly at about 18 mil just to suit this composition this is all about shutter speed it's long exposure what we've got here is the tide is on its way out which obviously means that the water is moving away from us but every now and again we get a rogue wave I'm hoping we get one whilst I'm here so you can see and it comes right in, literally right below the camera. Swarms round the tripod. And that's when I'm grabbing the shot. I've got a one second long exposure. So as I grab the shot, the water recedes back outwards. And all the sort of foam that's left on the top of the water becomes these sort of white lines that leads the eye out into this beautiful sort of turquoise aqua colored water. It looks fantastic. And then rest of the composition 
do I need to talk about it? Look at it, we've got a few little islets, beautiful moody sky. In fact, we've got drama up that side and then we've got a nice bit of light up here, which by the way, is giving us, look at it, you can see it there. It's giving us this, this like ethereal glow down here. The light is sublime. I don't, I don't think I could ask for more, you know, given these conditions. And then right up in the background, um, we've got quite a lot of mountains as well. All in all, see one's coming in here now. It's not quite far enough. Yeah, so you can tell, you can tell when there's a, like quite a big wave coming in. And see all the foam on the top, they are. Look at this. Grab the shot. Absolutely class, and yeah, it just leaves these lines in the foreground of the composition. I've got my Nissi six stop ND filter on the front um, with the Nissi polarizer. The polarizer is helping to bring out some of the aqua color in this water, fantastic. And the six stop is giving me my one second shutter speed. It's been a bit of a, a bit of trial and error with the shutter speed, as it should always be with moving water. Uh, I've had to bump my ISO up to 320 so I can get that one second shutter speed. That is my priority because it's all about the effect that the long exposure is creating in this shot, you know. Um, and that's that. First shot of today's adventure. It should be a cracker. sand everywhere. I dumped my bag down in a like a rock pool because I was so excited to get the camera set up. <sighs> Me and salt water are not getting on in this uh, on this trip. Right, hopefully that shot come out all right. I'm gonna go back to the car now and um, go on a bit of a drive because the next locations that I want to head to are probably like an hour's drive I think. Um, but I I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to them. I might have to get on a ferry as well but more on that later. <laughs> um, I was out last night, I left you. I didn't film anything. I had a little night on my own <laughs> uh, at a beach, probably a couple of miles in that direction. You know, of course it's gonna be quite similar, but it was a bit more of a bay, white sands, um, and last night was sort of a continuation of how the weather was throughout the day, um, which would have been last week's video for you guys. By the way, if you wanna watch that, I'll put a link up in the corner here. I probably should have said that at the start of the video. Um, but took one or two photographs there. Uh, the sands were beautiful, really sort of white. Um, and then we had the sort of aqua colored water again, but the clouds were so moody. So I'll pop one of those photographs up now for you to see. And let's hit the road. Look at this here, look at this. Sunglasses. This is what you get when you bring sunglasses to Scotland. Justice has been served. Who was I kidding? Right, sat nav is on, 56 minutes till the next location. Let's go. Speak a little bit quieter than usual because there's a, there's a few people around and I, I always say I don't want to be shouting and bawling my head off and ruining their day. <sighs> We've got a castle! Look at this! How cool is that? So it's not really the thing that I'd usually uh, come out and look for and photograph but it was in one of the books. I think it was in the wild guide. <sighs> I just couldn't deny it. I'm in Scotland man. They'd kick me out. The tourist board would kick me out if I didn't photograph. A castle at least once while I'm here. Oh, look what's unveiling itself here. This is why you should walk around um, subjects and explore them a little bit. Don't just look. See, look over there where the people are. That's where I've parked the car. Don't just park up 
grab a shot and then drive off. Have a little explore around, enjoy it, take your time. But yeah, look at the reflections here. I didn't have a clue about this. Um, you can probably tell the weather's changed. It's, it's dead still. It's mental. It was blowing an absolute gale this morning. Uh, there's no wind, but it's still looking quite moody in the sky, particularly above the castle. So that is a positive. But look at these reflections unveiling themselves here. Use your feet. These are your most valuable asset as a landscape photographer. <laughs> sure about this one I'm not sure it's not a lot of my photography I think is um, regardless of where I am what it is I'm photographing it's very emotion based what what emotions does a particular landscape or um, a potential photograph conjure up inside of me here I'm feeling a little bit flat <laughs> on the inside it's not I mean it's, it, it's lovely but like, how can you not like this some people are probably watching thinking you know, is everything all right with you, Henry? I don't know, it's just not really doing it for me. You know, I'm not mad on man-made objects. Why am I here? Why did I drive here? No, it's lovely and it's really cool to see as part of this adventure. So what I'm trying to do with the photograph is a panel. The main reason is, is because, um, I don't want to say the castle's small, more the sort of landscape that surrounds it. Look, it's not like huge mountains. So I'm zooming in at 130 mil with the 24 to 200 lens and almost sort of bringing those hills and the castle into the photograph so it all sort of appears larger. So it's four to five shots from left to right, of course. I've leveled out the tripod with the bowl head. Um, I'm in a portrait dimension. Um, settings are all gonna be consistent throughout every shot. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm actually shooting um, at f6.3 focused on the castle which means that the reflections and everything down here all the sands are actually going to be out of focus somewhat and I think I'm just sort of playing around a little bit creatively because I'm not massively inspired which is something that I like to do you know just to see if I can get something different out of um, the location and the photograph um, but yeah I think that's about it we've actually got a nice little cottage over in this direction as well um, which is going to add a small bit of scale as well What's really nice about this whole peninsula that I'm on actually is it's very wooded, <laughs> um, which is awesome. I'd maybe like to try some woodland photography whilst I'm here. We'll see. Um, but f6.3, like I said, round about 130 mil, ISO 64 and one eightieth of a second for each photograph. But it's not gonna be too bad. Come on, Mr. Car. This is a bumpy road. <laughs> um, so we are leaving the castle now. Uh, that was good. I'm, I'm glad I came down to visit it, you know. Um, I do feel like the drone shots, you will have just seen them already. I feel like the drone shots were probably a little bit better. I feel like that location was suited to them sort of, uh, them sort of photographs. So it's really grand and you capture quite a lot of the landscape. You know, it shows um, the grandeur of the castle, I suppose. Whoa, there's a car coming. Um, so, thank you sir. I am off to my next location now, which is about a 45 minute drive, and it's a woodland, an ancient woodland. I haven't done any woodland photography in ages, um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Let's crack on. Oh, how's my lens? It's, uh, is that gonna focus on my face yet? My lens is a little bit 
drizzling. It's just a bit wet. There we go. So, we've arrived at the woodlands, guys. We'll get into that in a second. But on a side note, just behind you guys, there's what looks like a wonderful wooden picnic bench. Perfectly usable. I've also got this nice flat platform on the back of my car, which folds out. However, all right, I've bought this camping table and this darned tripod stool, <laughs> especially for this Scotland trip. I hope no one's about, because they're gonna think I'm an absolute lunatic. Um, but yeah, I wanna use them because I haven't had a chance to use them yet because of the rain. And it's raining now, but I've had enough. I'm gonna use them. So I'm making myself a coffee, just finished it actually, that I don't really even want. Although it is cozy to be fair in the rain. Can't complain. Right, just briefly before we get into the woods and before I have my coffee, I wanted to stop and say another huge, massive thank you to Squarespace for kindly sponsoring um, today's video. It's the support that I receive from them and you guys especially that allows these trips to happen and uh, for me to create this content. So I'm very grateful. If you don't know who Squarespace are, it's a platform where you can build your own website. It can be for anything, not just for photography and the biggest selling point, the biggest draw for me in the first place, I've used them for about three years now, uh, is that it's so easy to do it, to build your own website. Um, but you still have a lot of freedom to make it your own, to make it personal to you as well. Uh, the customer service is fantastic, always been really helpful for me. Um, and I use it for my e-commerce as well. You know, it's where I sell my prints, my eBooks, uh, my one-to-ones are on offer there on my Squarespace website and my calendars, which by the way, I've got a select few left and then that's it, they're gone. So if you want to support the channel and you want a wonderful 2022 landscape photography calendar, get over to my Squarespace website, I'll put a link below. Um, but yeah, couldn't recommend them enough. If you want to give Squarespace a go, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Henry Turner to get yourself a 14 day free trial and if you like it, be sure to use the offer code Henry Turner at checkout for 10% off your first purchase. Right, cough, cough, and then I'll meet you in the woods. Hmm, <laughs> oh, that is the stuff. I tell you what, if this isn't living the dream, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. just come around this this little corner here and I'm taking a shot here now that I really didn't expect um, I'm sort of I've just started I'm only about two minutes into this walk and it's basically just going to be one big long path I think it's three miles long we might be a mile and a half there a mile and a half back I'm not sure but I've not really got into the thick of the forest yet but I've come into this like valley that I really wasn't expecting you know I just thought it was just was going to be proper woodland um, flat out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've rounded this corner here and right off in the distance we've got these sort of layers of, I don't know if they're like pine trees maybe or fir trees, uh, but then it goes off into the background where we've got a couple of layers of hills as well and then just this blanket of cloud on the, uh, the most distant mountain, which is quite moody, the clouds that's really helping. So we've basically got maybe three, four, five different layers and what I'm doing is zooming right into that with the telephoto lens, I've actually flicked it onto what is on the Nikon cameras called DX mode, uh, which basically means it puts it into a crop sensor mode. So it degrades the image quality uh, slightly, but you do get a little bit of a further reach. I guess, you know, at 200 mil, I'm getting 300 mil. Um, so it's a little bit of a trade off, but the way I look at it is, does it really matter? Like the megapixels on this camera, if the image quality goes down a little bit, it's still gonna be as good, if not better than what I had with my D7200. But anyway, it's all about the composition, as it always so often is with landscape photography um, and light. We haven't really got light um, per se on, on, on the scene. We've got a little bit of a glow, but it's probably more about the drama that we're getting from the clouds and the atmosphere. Uh, it's probably a little bit abstract, which I'm quite glad about, because I was thinking as I was driving here before, um, to this this forest that I've probably played it quite safe with the photography you know so far I haven't been really that experimental which I'm not really that bothered about but I was just thinking I'd like to get something a little bit um, different you know think outside the box 
um, somewhat. So, what are we at here? Let's check the settings. F11, ISO 64, 120th of a second. Um, and I've taken um, also one shot at 200mm on the normal full frame mode, which is obviously a little bit more zoomed out. And I've incorporated some of the oak trees on the bottom left of the frame just to see if I prefer that when I get it home. But a, a bit of a weird one to start this, um, this little forest adventure. So I think sometimes as a landscape photographer, you get yourself set up. You've got an idea, you get set up, and then you look through your viewfinder or on your live view, whatever, on the back of your camera, at the scene, at the composition, and you just know there's something inside of you that tells you this is gonna be a good photograph. And I think, I think I'm onto one of them here. I don't wanna sound so conclusive about it because you never really know, do you, 100% until you get it home into Lightroom or whatever and do a bit of post-processing, but I've got a really good feeling about this one. So, tripod's in a little bit of a funny spot. I'm shooting through the fence here on this little narrow bridge where I'm blocking everyone off where they're trying to walk through. What a wally, but I'm sure you can agree this scene over my right shoulder is just stunning. We've got this river um, that's leading off out into the mist and into these layers of trees in the background. Loads of boulders throughout the river, which is really helping just to add a little bit of something, you know. And then not to mention the wonderful deciduous trees that are lining the banks of it. I've got a good feeling about this. I, I feel like this may be the best photograph of the Scotland trip so far. Bold statement, but we'll see. So, again, like my first shot this morning, actually, shutter speed is of utmost importance. Uh, one second, I'm finding. I think that was the same as the shot this morning as well, actually. Just to capture a little bit of movement in the river, in the water, but still retain, um, you know, a decent amount of detail. I want to show that this is moving water. It's quite fast. Look at this. You can hear it behind me here. So it's about uh, finding a little bit of a balance. I'm zoomed in at what looks like 55 mil, 60 mil, something like that. ISO 64 and F14. Uh, which is helping me to get that one second shutter speed. I have got my Nissi polarizer on the front as well, but I've only got it sort of half turned. I don't want to get rid of all of that glare on the river because it is helping uh, or it's acting as like a really nice leading line into the distant forest and into the mist. And um, so again, it's a little bit of a balance with the polarization, but ugh, like I said, I've got a really good feeling about this one. And I think the emotion that I want to try and get across is almost that it's like magical, like a fairy tale feeling. So I hope that I managed to do that. I hope you like this one. So, I'm leaving the woodland. I'm, I feel a little bit disappointed in a way. I, I, I do hope and I, I feel like that last shot's going to have come out all right, but I really wanted to get like a sort of classic woodland photograph, but I just don't have time. I need to catch a ferry like I mentioned earlier. More on that in a bit, but goodbye ancient woodland. I will be back. Imagine this place in autumn. It's only two or three weeks away. Uh, quality. Right. Let's go and get this boat. So I'm just waiting for the ferry now. It's really difficult for me to explain this because I am on the mainland, but I'm on some crazy peninsula um, where it'd take like two hours to get all the way back around to there. I'll have to show you up on a map, but that's where I'm going over to, which is almost in Glencoe. So it's weird, I can't get my head around that Glencoe's just over there, probably about 
five miles as the crow flies or something, I'm not sure, but jump on this ferry now, nine quid, and it's gonna cut a lot of time off the journey. It must be amazing for like these communities and that that live around here um, to have this. It must be a lifeline. <laughs> uh, right, it is now 20 past six, and I've decided I've made the executive decision <laughs> that I'm gonna go home, back down to England. Um, this has been quality. I just feel like I should leave it how it is now. I'll get over here now, I'll probably have like a four and a half hour journey to get home, and then it's done. It's been, just honestly, I don't even have the words. It's been so good both on the adventure front and the photography front, I think, as well. I haven't got home and seen the photographs, obviously, yet. But I want to thank you very much for joining me um, on these adventures and for your wonderful support, as always. Um, just briefly, like I mentioned earlier, I have got a remaining few calendars left, um, 2022 landscape photography calendars. Um, any purchases, greatly appreciated and uh, really does help to support my channel. Um, thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next adventure. Out.